I hit my first 100 girls I slept with in June of 2012, and I hadn't studied any other bits of game. It was just mystery methods. So there's a lot of really good stuff in there that I still incorporate to this day. Hey guys, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. Today we're gonna to cover Mystery Method in 2019. What is still working from Mystery Method in 2019? Okay, so a lot of you might be asking yourselves, what the f is Mystery Method? So there was a popular seduction, dating, uh, pickup book that came out in the mid 2000s called The Game. Okay, it was a New York Times bestseller. The author is Neil Strauss, and it kind of went into the underground with the pickup artist community and reviewed a bunch of the pickup artists that were prominent in the early days. Okay, one of them was a pickup artist who's actually my favorite, named Mystery. Okay, his real name is Eric Von Markovic. He is a Canadian pickup artist from Toronto originally. He's about 50 now. And he wrote a book called The Mystery Method. And this book is very much like the way that I teach game. It's very practical. It's very straightforward, okay? It has a method that you can follow in terms of steps, okay? Unlike a lot of the information that's out there in the modern day uh, seduction and dating community, which is very woo-woo, very self-help, very abstract, and very confusing, okay? And doesn't lead to very many results. I hit my first 100 girls I slept with in June of 2012, and I hadn't studied any other bits of game. It was just mystery methods. So there's a lot of really good stuff in there that I still incorporate to this day. I will put this out there that I think mystery failed to evolve. I feel that he is still stuck back in 2006. He's still doing a bunch of stuff that is incorrect or suboptimal. And I will cover next week in a video the seven worst parts of mystery method that do not apply, they didn't apply then either, but things that are wrong about his method, okay? But this video is gonna go into seven things that are correct about his method. So I'm gonna go through those seven things and you're gonna wanna stay till the end because number seven is gonna be the most important, okay? And it's gonna kind of break all the rest of the rules in game and show you why this is his most important concept, okay? Before we go any further, please like the video below. Please press the subscribe button. Also press the notification bell next to it so you get notified about my new videos Sunday through Thursday. And also you get notified about my YouTube Live, which by the way, there's one of those today. It's every Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, okay? And on that, it will be a two to two and a half hour question answering session. Basically ask me anything face to face with all you guys where you can type in the chat, interact with me directly, okay? And it goes about two, and, two to two and a half hours. That's your chance each week to ask me questions about game and to interact with me. All right, so number one on the list of mystery method in 2019 of the things that are still working. The first one that I will cover, it's demonstrations of higher value, okay? Otherwise known as DHVs. Now, RSD, Real Social Dynamics, they kind of did away with the concept of DHVs and they tried to introduce this whole notion of natural game and just be natural and all this stuff, okay? And as you saw in the clip, uh, if you saw my Todd video, Todd is saying the idea of natural game doesn't make any sense and it, it's formed around a bunch of lies and misconception and all this stuff. So DHV is still relevant. RSD kind of washed it out of the community, but I still use it in every interaction and it's still very important. So a demonstration of higher value is where you're showcasing a high value aspect about your personality or your life, okay, or you as a man, that causes the woman to be more attracted to you. Okay, some examples of this, as you've seen in my infield hidden camera breakdowns, I'm talking about how I've traveled the world, how I have a higher education, how I used to DJ, or I mentioned that I still do DJ, okay, which is a white lie, but those things are high value traits, okay, dating other attractive women, I work these things into stories. Now the important thing to note about a DHV, a demonstration of higher value, is you don't wanna come from the frame of bragging or explicitly trying to like show off. Like, an ex like examples of doing this in the wrong way would be to say things like, oh, did you know I drive a Lamborghini? Or did you know I'm a doctor? Those are high value things, but it's coming from a place of like trying to show off or be cool. And that actually has the reverse effect and the girl thinks you're trying to compensate. So it actually lowers your value, okay? So DHVs are very important and moving right on ties in to point number two, he had the concept of attraction switches. Okay, That's, this is also another powerful one basically built in through evolution set of things that a man can exhibit a set of traits that a woman is going to be attracted to okay so in no particular order the five attraction switches that mystery identifies that women will respond to and become more attracted to the first one is leader of men 
Okay, so are you the alpha leader? Are you leading your friends? Are you leading a group? Are you the life of the party? Those types of things. Number two, pre-selection. That means other hot women have approved of you or you've dated other hot women. Okay, that kind of short circuits her approval and screening process because other hot women have approved of you. They've even done studies with animals where they'll have like a guy standing by him, a male standing by himself, the female gender of that from that same species, they're not really that interested. Then you put a female next to him, an attractive female, will be considered attractive for that animal species. All of a sudden, all the women take interest, okay? That's a perfect example. This is hardwired into these females, okay? If she sees other hot women like you, she wants you more, okay? Now, number three, you have an adventurous life. So for me personally, that goes into my stories about how I've traveled the world, how I DJ, etc., etc. So that showcasing that you have a fun life, a lot of cool shit going on, and maybe even more fun than hers, okay? Number four, protector of loved ones. Do you stand up for your friends? Do you stand up for your family members, okay? That is important, showing that you are there to stand up and protect. And number five, willingness to emote, which is facial expressions, body language, showing emotion through how you interact and vibe with people, as opposed to talking like this in the group, and I'm expecting a woman to be attracted to me when I am talking like this and seem very unsure of myself and very boring. Okay, so those are the five things. That is number two, the attraction switches. So notice how those two are kind of hand in hand. Demonstrating higher value, also flipping attraction switches. This is like the core of my verbals in in-person interactions and on dates. Okay, I'm raising my value so that she can see me as a high value man and so she can be more attracted. Number three also ties in, okay? Cementing an identity. Okay, so this is Mystery's concept. He talks about in his book that you don't want to say like, hi, I'm Joe, I'm an accountant, because that's boring. Hi, I'm Maurice. I'm an executive by day and a wild man by night. Okay, and it's value neutral or even low value. As opposed to saying, hi, I'm and then some cool nickname, and say, oh, I play lead guitar in a band, or like, I'm in a rock band. That sounds a lot cooler, okay? When I tell a girl very early on in an interaction that I'm a DJ, that imports I know a lot of people, I have access to a lot of women, I have a very fun life, okay, I have a life that's probably a lot more fun and exciting than hers. So when you cement this identity, it imports a whole bunch of value and imports a whole bunch of stuff before she's even gotten to know you, okay? So that's happening very early on in the interaction. That's number three, cementing an identity. Number four, speaking of starting an interaction, okay, or what is referred to as opening, Mystery had something called the three second rule, which is still very relevant, okay? And I teach the same thing to my students. This allows you to bulldoze past your approach anxiety and get past any form of initial hesitation when you're thinking about approaching a stranger in public. Okay, so the three second rule basically means that once you see a target, as it's referred to, or a girl you wanna to talk to, you have three seconds or less to go and do the approach, okay? So this basically becomes an automatic thing. See the girl go in. That way you're not wondering like, what if she doesn't like me? What if she has a boyfriend? What if I fuck up? What if any number of other things? What if she leaves? Okay, so that three second rule is very important. Okay, so moving on to number five, his principle of compliance. That is probably one of his most important concepts. It's still the center of my method. Okay, so what is compliance? It's basically is the girl going along with something that you're trying to do. So a compliance test, as he uh, coined the term, is basically when you approach, when you open, there's a compliance test. Is she receptive to your open? When you go for a kiss, or what's referred to in the community as a kiss close, is she receptive to that? Is she compliant to that? When you isolate, when you move her away from her friends to another part of the venue, is she compliant to that? When you try to leave the venue with her, is she compliant to that? And then there's like kind of macro level meta compliance assessments. Like, is she paying attention to you when you're talking to her? Is she laughing at your jokes? Okay, or is she just looking down at her phone and distracted? Okay, is she kind of like giving you the blow off in terms of her vibe? These are all compliance, okay? I, I look at everything in game all the way through from the start to the finish, even when you have a girl as a rotation girl, as compliance or non-compliance, okay? I don't look at hook points, I don't look at, these are just game terms for those of you that are in the community, but I don't look at like doing push-pull or gaining investment, you know, cold, re all, most of the stuff in the community I think is totally wrong. I think everything is either compliance or non-compliance. I don't believe in shit tests. A shit test in my framework would just be if the girl is being non-compliant, okay? And I know what to do and I train my students and I've developed optimal ways at each point when there's non-compliance, what to say and what to do to optimally overcome that non-compliance. So compliance is a very, very, very important part of game. Mystery coined that term. It's also a huge cornerstone in sales 
in any kind of persuasion art in general. Okay, so number six, mystery's concept of disinterest. Okay, he also had a book besides Mystery Method called Revelations. Okay, and Revelations sounds like a biblical work. Uh, he co-wrote that with the pickup artist named Love Drop, otherwise known as Chris Odom. I've read that. He has a whole section on disinterest. Now, disinterest kind of has its roots in classical psychology with reward and punishment. Now, this sounds hardcore, but basically you're just giving disinterest in response to non-compliance so that you discourage that bad behavior. Okay. Now, he has a whole bunch of ways you can deal with the non-compliance and show disinterest. But the main one that I teach in my product and on my live programs is you kind of give what I deemed coined the term of a non-compliance face, right? So if she's non-compliant in any one of these particular points, you kind of give her a look like, like this. It's, you kind of have a smile, but it's coming from the frame of like, really? Like you're going to act like that, right? Your frame is that of course she's going to comply with what I want because I'm the man and I'm cool and all this stuff, not in an arrogant or bragging way, but just you, you know your own value and you already got the girl before you even approach. And I'll talk about that in number seven. You'll, you'll see the big surprise, number seven in a second. But that non-compliance face a lot of times can turn things around, okay? There's a lot more to it. And I'll make a whole video on dealing with non-compliance. And I'll also make a video, a whole separate video on number seven, which is the most important, and that is frame control. Now, Mystery says in his book, The Mystery Method, that if you have proper conf frame control and you have mastered controlling frames, that that puts all the other advice out the window. It's like basically the trump card. Frame control and the ability to control frames beats every other advice and recommendation in the game, okay? Now, a brief note on frame control. I tell guys, when you're going out, okay, don't approach a new stranger thinking, oh, I need to win her over, or I hope she likes me, or I hope I can not fuck up. Instead, you're coming from the frame of, I am a high value guy, I get girls like this all the time. And even if you don't, that's, you just need to have that mindset, okay? It can't be a big deal to you. Um, that's another one, that would be an eighth one. He says, nothing is ever a big deal. Okay, that's, an, that's another little bonus one that Mystery nailed. So, the frame control, you're coming in like, I already got this girl, so it's gonna be, Subcommunicated through all your body language, through your expressions, how you vibe, how you react to different things she's doing. Okay, you're not in there to win her over, you already got her before you even approached. Okay, if it doesn't work out, who gives a shit? Okay, but the point is, your frame is that you already got her, so she falls into that a lot of the times, and then she's yours. If you don't believe that you have her, if you're coming with a frame like, oh, I don't know if, uh, if I can get this girl, or maybe I think I'm not good enough, why would she believe? That you're good enough if you don't even believe it okay it's going to have the opposite effect and come through your body language in a negative way so i'll make a separate video on frame control i'll make a video on dealing with compliance and non-compliance and that is it so mystery has a bunch of good concepts as you've seen that still work in 2019 that i'm actively still using in my game so i hope that was helpful guys make sure you click the like button below make sure you share this video with your friends especially those that are interested in mystery method and make sure you press the subscribe button and also the bell notification so you're updated about my new videos every Sunday through Thursday and my YouTube live, one of which is happening today, every Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, thank you guys for tuning in. Check out next week. I will be going over seven things that do not work for Mystery Method, okay, that you should not be doing. Okay, thank you very much. This is John Anthony. Talk to you guys later.